Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This episode is about the ZWO C-Star S30 Smart Telescope. It was sent to me by ZWO in exchange for a review. They're aware that I am primarily a visual astronomer, but they sent it to me anyway because perhaps to get my take on it and see if it's something that might interest my audience, which I believe is primarily other visual astronomers. So here's my take on the C-Star S30. All the photos that I'll show in this video were taken by me with this C-Star S30 and I didn't process any of the photos. They're exactly how they came out of the camera. First, let's open it up. Now for a quick overview. The C-Star S30 is a compact, all-in-one smart telescope. Well, they call it a telescope, but it's really just an incredibly advanced, sophisticated camera that's designed to make astrophotography easy and accessible, especially for beginners and backyard stargazers. It weighs about 1,800 grams or about four pounds, but it packs surprisingly powerful features. You get the C-Star S30 unit, this little tripod, a USB-C cable to charge it, a solar filter for taking daytime solar pictures, and a carry case. Everything you need to start immediately taking astrophotos. It uses a 30 millimeter apochromatic triplet lens, which is f5, giving it a 150 millimeter focal length. Perfect for framing the sun or the moon, or for wide field nebulae and star clusters. The main camera uses the Sony IMX662 Starvis sensor in full HD resolution, good for faint targets, and it has a clever dual lens design, a main telephoto lens for detailed astro shots, and a wide angle lens for framing and looking around. You control everything with the C-Star mobile app, which locates the object, focuses on the object, tracks the object, aligns for you, and live stacks the images it takes automatically. And incredibly, it even uses AI to denoise the photo. You can even use the framing tool that'll make a mosaic of a large object like the Great Andromeda Galaxy, and it'll stitch the pictures into the mosaic together for you in the camera. It runs off of an internal battery that can last about six hours when you fully charge it. This thing is very easy to use. When it arrives, you just charge it fully, download the app to your phone, open the app when you're ready to use it, connect to the built-in Wi-Fi, and set it on the tripod, and you're ready to take pictures. There's no polar alignment, there's no auto guiding, no annoying cables to worry about. And right in the app, you can choose what mode you wanna use. You can choose deep sky, solar system, or even scenic shots during the day. And it'll automatically find and track your target in the night sky. In my testing, the Sea Star did really well on bright nebulae and larger galaxies and on star clusters. The live stacking and noise reduction make it possible to get pleasing results even from a light polluted area like your backyard. But keep in mind, with only 30 millimeters of aperture, you won't get the tiny faint details that bigger telescopes can get. But for wide field shots, it's excellent. But it can't take Milky Way shots. It's very easy to set up. Anyone can do it, even an old lady like me. It has built-in automation and tracking, a dual lens, and it's portable, and it's lightweight, and it's battery powered. On the downside, it has the small aperture, not good for the planets or for fine detail on deep sky objects. And worst of all, since like almost everything these days, it relies on using an app on your phone, I had to buy a second used phone just to operate this thing since I already needed my actual phone for 
Stellarium, Sky Safari, Star Sense. And even though ZWO calls this sophisticated device a smart telescope, you can't look through it. It's not a telescope. It's a trailblazing landmark camera. So who is this device for? And why would ZWO send it to me, Sula, visual astronomer? Well, if you're like me, and primarily a visual observer, you're probably thinking the same thing. Why would I want a smart telescope like the ZWO C-Star S30? I had the same question. I enjoy looking at the night sky with my naked eye, with a telescope, or with binoculars. I like eyepieces and telescopes and star hopping and observing with my own eyes. But after using this sophisticated camera, I think it's a good adjunct for visual astronomers. The C-Star S30 could never ever replace my beloved Dobsonian Herschel or my beloved 15-inch reflector or any of my telescopes. Instead, I just think of it as a tool to use to explain my visual observations to my audience. <laughs> or maybe for other visual observers, the biggest appeal wouldn't be astrophotography, but more as an assistive device. What the C-Star does really well is the live stacking, which is sort of like electronic assisted astronomy, but in this tiny little box. You select an object and within seconds you can see the object, a faint galaxy and, or maybe a nebula, it'll reveal itself on your phone or your tablet. For objects that are barely visible or that you can't see at all visually, especially under light polluted skies, it might be like suddenly having access to the Messier and the NGC catalogs that you never had before. Many people, if not most people, don't have ready access to dark skies. For visual astronomers in suburban skies or urban areas, this can mean the difference between observing or not observing at all. The way I see the Sea Star S30 is something to use alongside my telescope. I'll be observing visually with the 10-inch Dobsonian and the Sea Star will be doing its magic while quietly sitting on the ground nearby, capturing or stacking the same object or usually some other object. Or you could use the Sea Star S30 to confirm what you're looking at in the eyepiece. It's only a 30 millimeter aperture, so it's particularly good for wide field objects such as large emission nebulae or large star clusters. But keep in mind, this device is not a telescope. There's no eyepiece. There's no thrill of discovering something or finding it on your own. If you're like me and what you love about astronomy is the challenge and the skill of visual observations and the thrill of finding things and seeing these objects that are so incredibly far away with your own eyes, you'll still want your telescope and your binoculars and your traditional gear. The Sea Star doesn't and never will replace that, but it can fill in the gaps. So I think the C-Star S30 has its place and it can make sense for visual astronomers who observe under highly light polluted skies or who want quick low effort sessions, and I mean low effort, or just want to share with others their views. Or maybe someone who wants to do a little astrophotography on the side but who doesn't want to buy a complex setup and learn that steep learning curve, or just wants a backup option for those nights when visual observing isn't ideal. For visual astronomers like me, the ZWO C-Star S30 isn't about becoming an astrophotographer because astrophotography can never replace visual astronomy for me. It's what I love and what I live for. <laughs> It's more about supplementing my visual experience instead of replacing the telescope. Then it could be a good supplement for your visual experience. 
I personally found it very helpful to use the S30 to show my audience, you all, in my videos, what I'm looking at in my eyepiece, which the audience has demanded for a long time and told me that they would like for me to include in my videos. But it's something that's always been very difficult for me to accomplish. It's almost impossible to show what I'm looking at in the eyepiece. I don't think people liked my sketches that much. <laughs> But with this little device, it's suddenly become much easier. I can see it really help improve my videos. And I think for visual astronomers in general, it would make an excellent supplement to the visual experience. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, my take on the Seastar S30. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula. Signing off.